Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman with Batman and Robin, Story 4 from 1945. So let's get started. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman. And today, his young friends, Jimmy Olsen and Dick Grayson, whom we know is really the famous Robin, are alarmed over the sudden disappearance of their companion, Lois Lane. Hunted by the police for shooting a federal agent, Dixie Lamar, member of a criminal gang, was hiding out in Playland, a metropolis amusement park, with Dr. Bly, the leader of the gang. Seeing a photograph of Lois Lane in the Daily Planet, and discovering that Lois was an almost perfect double for Dixie, Dr. Bly conceived the scheme of pinning the murder on Lois. Posing as a press agent, he invited the girl reporter to be guest of honor at the amusement park that night. And when Lois arrived with Jimmy Olsen and Dick Grayson, who was really Robin, Batman's young companion, the three were given a ride on the River of Horrors. But as their boat glided through a dark tunnel, a luminous skeleton rose from the darkness and seized Lois. As we join them now, Jimmy and Dick are unable to stop the boat widget without oars, and it's being carried along by a slow current. Listen. Oh, my gosh, Dick. What do we do? We've got to get help, Jim, and come back and find us. Get help where? How? We're in a dark tunnel. I can't see a thing. We're coming to the end of the tunnel. See just ahead. Huh? Where? Oh, oh yeah. Think the lizards do something. Make this boat go fast? We can't. There are no oars anymore. Don't lose your head. We'll be out in a minute. Don't lose your head. This plane is gone. That, that skeleton is on We don't understand it. Here, we're coming to the end of the tunnel. Sit down. If it's old, no, I will. There are rocks lining the river outside the tunnel. If we can grab hold of them and pull the boat over, we can climb out and not have to drift all the way back to the end. Well, that's a good idea. Try to grab the rock. All right. Careful, old thing. Come on, Jim. Yeah. What out, Jim? Uh, boy, it's a good thing that rock was there. Could have gone into the drink. I'll well, say. Okay, we can get out. Come on. All right. Oh, I'm with you. Oh, Poor Miss Lane. Don't worry. We'll find her. But where is she? Jeepers. That, that skeleton here hit the midway. Jump down, Jim. It's only a few feet. Okay. Which way? This way, back to the entrance. We have to watch this thing. I didn't put my son there on wristwatch. Oh, is that what that thing on your wrist is? Yeah, it's out time by the sun. Hey, that's swell. Well, where'd you get it? Batman gave it. Who? Uh, uh, I... Hey, now, you two. All right. Oh, wait, Dick, it's a cop. A cop, am I? Ah, look at here, you two, Spalpy. What do you mean, climbing up in them rocks? Gee, officer, you got here just in time. You oh, but I did. A young lady Miss Lane. disappeared in the tunnel. A skeleton grabbed her. And then it disappeared, too. Come on, officer. Yeah, you've got to find it. Wait a minute. Let go, Miss Lee. Now, this big sign say to keep off them rocks. Can't you read? Sure. A skeleton got Miss Lane in the tunnel on the River of Horror. You've got to help us find her. Come on. So a skeleton got someone in here. Now, what kind of malarkey are you trying to give me? It's true. See, we were in a boat, Miss Lane. Got into the tunnel, a skeleton jumped out of the darkness and, and grabbed her. And then they both disappeared. Yes, that's so now. Sure, and I ought to run you both in. First for climbing on the rocks and then for killing a whopper like that. But it's true, I tell you. The skeleton still got her. Don't just stand there. Don't be after telling me what to do. Well, we'll do some. Come on back to the entrance of the River of Horrors with us. We'll get another boat and go after Miss Lane. Well, we'll go. Then. Come on. It's your hands. Please help us find her, mister. Please. A kind of a 
kind of a gag is this? It's true. The skeleton got Miss Lane. How could a wooden paper skeleton grab anybody? Are you nuts? No. Honest. You see... I don't like these kind of jokes. They're bad for business. Go on, beat it. No, no, wait. You've got to listen. I don't have to listen to crazy stuff like that. Get them out of here, Riley. They're bad for business. You see, they didn't take a ride in one of your boats, Joe. No, they didn't take a ride tonight. I would have remembered them if they did. You hear that? Now, come on, beat it, you kid. No, wait. You must remember us. We got into the boat less than five minutes ago. You were there when we got in the boat. I see you didn't ride in one of my boats tonight. You say you did where's your ticket stuff. Anybody rides in my boat, they keep the stuff and give them back to me when they finish the ride. Where's your stuff? Oh, we didn't have any tickets. Don't you remember? Mr. Hemingway brought us here and, and said to you that our ride was on the house. And you said okay. Is that right, Joe? I don't give rides for nothing. And I never heard of any Mr. Hemingway either. Well, you did too. You know him. He's the press agent here. The press agent is all amusement for him. Now, I know you kids are nuts. There's no Mr. Hemingway, the press agent of Flailer. Just a minute, Joe. What did this Mr. Hemingway look like, boys? Well, he's a pretty old man. He's got a deep voice and white hair, and he wears dark glasses. Okay, I've heard enough. The press agent of Flailer is named Harry Spencer, and he's a young fellow. But I tell you... And he ain't got a deep voice either. Now, I ought to run you kids into this. But I'm going to close my eyes and count to three. Well, let's hear By the time I finish counting. You'd better be where I can't see you or I will run into you. Oh, listen, please. You've got to believe I'm going to start counting. One. Don't believe it. What are we going to do here? You can better beat it, that's what. Who? Oh. I know what I'm going to do. Come on, kid. Where? I'm going to call back. Somebody will find this lady. Mr. Kent, I'll call him. Come on. I see some phone books behind us. They got you. Yeah, crazy kid. Ah, why should we worry? If there's no harm done, we'll get it with your family. I think I put the fear in the law of the young devil. But I'll be back in a short while to make sure they ain't bothering you no more. Hello. Hello, Riley, and much obliged. So, Dr. Bly. I told you not to mention my name. You're kind of scared me sneaking up like that. Uh, good thing you took off your white wig and dark glasses before the cops body. Don't mind that. What did you do with the girl, Miss Lane? The names I sent. She's in the same place. What happened to the two boys who were with her? The boat was empty when it came back through the tunnel. I know. They climbed out over the rocks when they got out of the tunnel, and they got a cop. Cop? Yeah, Riley, the one who just left here. I saw them off, all right. He thinks the kids were joke. You fool. You shouldn't let them get away. Well, what could I do? They came back here with Riley. Oh, you fool, you stupid fool. If they get away, they'll spoil everything. Well, what could I do, Doc? Shut up. Which way did they go? Quick, over to those phone booths behind the hot dog stand. The rock caller, Mr. Kent, and somebody named Pat. They started over just before you showed up. Good. May not be too late then. Now remember, you never saw the girl. Those two boys didn't ride in your boat. Swiftly, Dr. Bly turns and hurries through the gay crowds to the telephone booths, where Jimmy and Dick are excitedly calling Clark Kent and Batman for aid. We'll return in a moment for the dramatic climax of today's episode. But first, here is your announcer. Hey there, Pep Gang. Are you getting your complete set of Kellogg's Pep insignia and warplane buttons in shape? I mean the new second series of 22 buttons. Boy, they're real beauties in four sparkling colors of red, blue, black, and yellow against a pure white background. And you know, it's a good idea to swap them and get the ones you need to fill out the series. For example, suppose you have an extra insignia of the 17th Bombardment Squadron. That's the comical-looking pilot with goggles leaning on an upended bomb. But you need the 56th Bombardment Squadron button. And suppose your pal has an extra one of those. Then the thing to do is to trade with him fast. That way, you both get the buttons you're looking for. And what a thrill you'll get when you can show the rest of the gang that you have a whole second series. But remember, gang, you can't buy these buttons anywhere. No, sir, they come only in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. So ask mom to see that there's plenty of Kellogg's Pep at your house. Inside, you'll find your prize, an air squadron insignia or warping button. There's a button in every package. It's a prize for you from P-E-P, -P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And gang, there's just one more thing. It's very important for you to tune in Monday at this same time for some big news. I'll have about a wonderful new Kellogg's Pep prize. Something you'll all go wild about. The thing you've all been waiting for. Don't forget now, boys and girls, 
Get in on the big Superman news Monday. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. It is 15 minutes since Jimmy Olsen telephoned Clark Kent from Playland. At once, Kent streaks through the amusement park as Superman. Now, having secretly assumed his guise of the mild handed reporter, he is pacing restlessly up and down before the ticket booth of the River of Horror. That's right up, ladies and gentlemen, and get your tickets for the thrill of a lifetime. Jim said he'd meet me right uh, here. So that was Superman with Batman and Robin for 1945, story four. So, so if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.